Hello, I'm just going to talk you through the approach that you might take when you write an analytical paragraph. So we're going to be focusing on the end of animal farm. And the question that we're looking at is how does the end of the novel show once and for all a bleak portrayal of the ideals of animalism? So first of all, we need to find a good quotation. So to do that, we need to analyse a section of the text, looking at the language and the techniques that Orwell uses to show how the ideals of animalism have been betrayed. So I've got a section of text here taken from the novel. Let's just read it through. The animals were hard at work building yet another windmill. When that one was finished, so it was said, the dynamos would be installed. But the luxuries of which Snowball had once taught the animals to dream, the stools with electric light and hot and cold water, and the three-day week were no longer talked about. Napoleon had denounced such ideas as contrary to the spirit of animalism. The truest happiness, he said, lay in working hard and living frugally. Somehow it seemed as though the farm had grown richer without making the animals themselves any richer. Except, of course, for the pigs and the dogs. Right, now there's loads of things that we can get out of this in terms of close language analysis and thinking about how Orwell shows that the ideals of animalism have been betrayed. So if we start at the beginning, it says the animals were hard at work building yet another windmill. So they were hard at work. This adverbial phrase is describing the verb building and it describes how they build, so it's an adverb. This adverbial phrase, hard at work, suggests the gruelling regime of the pigs. So we'll put here, gruelling regime, just to remind ourselves. Ooh. There we go, gruelling regime. And then it also says, building yet another windmill. Now this phrase is also quite interesting. Yet another. There is definitely a sense of weariness with this phrase. A sense perhaps of exasperation. There's also a sense that this is one windmill too many. It's unnecessary. This leads us to question, well, why is it being built? And perhaps Orwell is implying that there is a darker subtext to why the windmill is being built, that maybe it's being built in order to keep the animals enslaved. If they're too tired and too weary from building the windmill, then there's less likely a chance that they will rebel against the gruelling regime. Let's continue reading. Orwell writes, When that one was finished, so it was said, the dynamos would be installed. Now we've got this little aside here. So it was said. This voice here is a little bit mistrustful of what the pigs are telling him. It implies that he is sceptical of what he is told. The rhetoric that the pigs use is ultimately meaningless and empty. That actually they won't get any dynamos to give them electricity to light their stools at night time. So I'm going to put an annotation here. This is a voice of scepticism. It is one that distrusts the rhetoric of the pigs. The rhetoric is empty. Okay, so we've got lots of good analysis so far. Let's continue. So all well right, but the luxuries of which Snowball had once taught the animals to dream the stalls with electric lights and hot and cold water and the three-day week were no longer talked about. And 
you have here this discourse marker but which suggests the emphasis on the fact that again their rhetoric is not to be trusted that these luxuries are no longer talked about there's been a u-turn so again the but emphasizes again the skepticism that the pigs's rhetoric is not to be trusted and again you've got this adverbial phrase no longer there is a betrayal of the original ideas a betrayal of what um, they promised so um, if we just put here sense of betrayal of pigs's original promises okay and if we just think back to the question this all creates quite a bleak ending of the novel there is a real sense that the ideals of animalism have failed okay Napoleon had denounced such ideas as contrary to the spirit of animalism. The truest happiness, he said, lay in working hard and living frugally. Somehow, it seemed, as though the farm had grown richer without making the animals themselves any richer. Except, of course, for the pigs and the dogs. And again, you've got this little aside here. Of course. Suggesting it is inevitable that the only people to benefit, or the only animals to benefit from, benefit from the regime, are those who are in power and in control. So this is another voice of, of weariness. It's just an inevitability of the abuse of power. It suggests the greed of those in charge. And it also suggests, of course, kind of a bleak acceptance of this. So I'm going to put here bleak acceptance. They're no longer fighting it anymore. Okay, now there's loads more that we could get out of this, but I think for now we can move on. We've got enough to say. So the next stage is to start writing our paragraphs, thinking about what points we're going to make. Okay, so I have a paragraph that um, has been written using close language analysis from the extract that we've just looked at. Let's read this through and think about why it is such a good analytical paragraph. At the end of the novel, Orwell presents a bleak picture of the once idealist communist state of Animal Farm. Orwell implies, once and for all, that the vision of brotherhood and unity cannot last long. Power will be seized and abused by a leading group. Orwell uses the construction of the second windmill to draw attention to the failure of the original hopes of animalism. The animals were hard at work building yet another windmill, when that one was finished, so it was said, the dynamos would be installed. The noun phrase, yet another windmill, suggests a tone of weariness and exasperation, emphasising the toll of the gruelling regime on the animal's spirits. This sense of weariness is supported by the adverbial phrase, hard at work, which Orwell uses to show the unending toil of the animals. Furthermore, the phrase, yet another windmill, also suggests that the windmill is surplus to requirements, unneeded and unnecessary. Orwell is implying, perhaps, that the building of this windmill is a method to keep the animals enslaved. With the animals tired and hungry, they are too weak to rebel, allowing the pigs to maintain power. Certainly, this is an abuse of Old Mage's ideology in the novel's first chapter. Furthermore, Orwell uses the aside, so it was said, to inject a sceptical voice. This voice is doubtful of the promises made by the pigs. It is doubtful that the new windmill will be used to create electricity to light their stalls. 
all while it's emphasising that the voices of the pigs and their persuasive rhetoric is empty, meaningless and not to be trusted, much like the propaganda of Stalin in the Russian Revolution. Let's look at how this analytical paragraph has been organised. You can see there's blue, purple, green, which relates to blue being the point, a focused point, introducing what this paragraph is going to be about. The purple is the quotation, and as you will see, it's quite a small section of the text that we looked at. Long quotations are not necessary because you cannot write about all of it. So pick a really focused, pithy little section of the quotation. And then the green represents the developed analysis. It has lots of close language analysis, analysing the language and techniques of Orwell. And it develops lots of different interpretations about what Orwell might be saying through his language and his techniques. There's lots of good things in the point if you focus on the point first of all. So if you look, it keeps referring back to Orwell. What is Orwell trying to do in this section? How is he um, using this part of the novel to show that um, power will be abused and the failure of the original hopes? It kind of signposts what the rest of the uh, analytical paragraph is going to focus on. We then have our quotation. As I said, it's quite a small part of the text that we looked at but there's loads to get out of it. And this is all that we can get out of the quotation. And it's quite a lot. First of all, you'll notice that we introduced the quotation with a colon. Lots of people forget to do that. And we've got quotation marks here and here. We've also now, in our analysis, got lots of technical language focusing on the sorts of techniques that Orwell uses. So we've got the noun phrase, and then we've quoted that little noun phrase, and what it suggests, what is the effect of this noun phrase? And we've got here that it suggests a tone of weariness and exasperation, which emphasises the grueling regime. And then I've developed that idea even more. Well, what else shows, what else is Orwell using to show this grueling regime? So we've got a little bit of development. Well, it actually it's supported by the adverbial phrase, hard at work. So we've developed that point. And then you'll see that we've got furthermore. So it's even more development. What else does yet another windmill suggest? And we've got that other idea that it implies that it's surplus to requirements, it's unnecessary, and what that might imply. Well, it, it's got here that implies that um, you know, the pigs are using this to maintain power. It's a bit of a ploy, a bit of a technique for the pigs to abuse their power and maintain their supremacy. Um, and that is fully explained. And we've got lots of lovely language in here, such as furthermore. Um, we've, got, we've got furthermore there. We've got suggests. We've got um, things like implies, um, we've got things like doubtful, sceptical, abuse, propaganda, lots of language which um, is sophisticated and formal for an essay. We've also got a little link at the end to context, showing our understanding that Orwell is uh, making an analogy or a comparison to the events of the Russian Revolution. Um, and he's showing that he's critical of the abuse of um, those in charge or those controlling. So, to conclude, first of all, Analyse in lots of detail an extract from the text focusing on the language and techniques used and the effect of those language and techniques. Then choose a little quotation from that extract which will, you will use in your analytical paragraph. Then you need to do your PQAD, making a focus point, analysing your quotation and developing in more detail what um, ideas you can draw from that quotation. Thanks for listening and I hope this helps you when you write your own analyses. Thank you.